Drafting is obviously one of the biggest parts of building a great NFL team, but what if we weren't allowed to do that at all? Because today, I'm gonna be doing a rebuild where I have to trade away every single draft pick that we have. In other words, this team is gonna get very expensive very quickly, and we're basically gonna be pulling like the Rams 2020-ish strategy and seeing if we can win a ring before it all falls apart. But super quick before we get into this rebuild i'm gonna keep this intro super short thank you all so much for 15,000 subscribers we did hit it yesterday i'll have to do a special video for that let me know any fun ideas y'all might have i'll see if there's one that i think would be good for that so be sure to subscribe if you want to be an og of the channel while you still can be one and plus i post only madden rebuilds so if you're into madden rebuilds you're definitely in the right place and we did really really well with the light goal on the last video y'all really seemed to enjoy it so i'm gonna be doing another one of those pretty soon but again let's see if we can get to 1500 likes on this video take the like two seconds it really does help out the channel i very much appreciate it and imagine if everyone did it we would be at like 20,000 likes or something ridiculous so if you enjoy the video be sure to do it but that's enough plugging i'm excited to get into this rebuild i've been loving all these crazy rebuild ideas i've been doing lately but let me get into a quick team breakdown here if y'all might know i'm a seahawks fan and uh their game against the rams was genuinely, I think, the worst game I've seen as a Seahawks fan. Well, except, you know, the dreaded Super Bowl. They got absolutely embarrassed by what I thought was the worst roster in the NFL, and I still do think that. It's just, it was such a massive coaching gap, it wasn't even funny. They could not figure out the Rams' practice squad level team outside of, like, Aaron Donald, Matt Stafford, like, a few players. They didn't even have Cooper Cup, though. And they all just looked lost, so for obvious reasons, I, they needed a rebuild and were we're gonna try to do it here. I haven't been a Pete Carroll fan for a few years now, and that just kinda solidifies my thinking a little more. I know it was just one game, but I've been thinking this for years, like I just said. They just refuse to adapt and keep trying what they know until it works or doesn't work, and it didn't work yesterday. <laughs> so we're bringing in the GOAT Mikey McDingle to try to save this team. But I mean, this is a good roster on paper. The offensive line is not great at all. The receiving core is really good, which by the way, there's such a massive narrative that DK's like a massive crybaby, especially because of yesterday where he like shoved a Rams player over. The Rams were playing dirty the entire game. I don't fault him that much for that. I wouldn't have done it. I don't love that he did it, but I understand why. I don't fault him for it that much. This is just devolved into me ranting about the Seahawks. Y'all should have expected it. Y'all are used to this at this point. Kenneth Walker did look like a stud yesterday. In this defense, I don't even want to talk about it. I'm, <laughs> I'm okay. <laughs> it's super shocking that refusing to cover the middle of the field r results in a ton of passes over the middle of the field. Rocket science, I know, but I genuinely, I felt like I was breaking down like film in the middle of the game. I was just waiting for them to just sit someone in the middle of the field and they wouldn't. And that's where they were throwing almost every single play. And also the extreme lack of pass rush definitely didn't help. <laughs> so if you couldn't tell, I love being a Seahawks fan and I definitely don't regret becoming a fan. But at least Pete Carroll won this team a Super Bowl 10 years ago and makes the playoffs every year just to lose in the first round. That's super fun. But anyways, I'll stop being mad now, for now at least, <laughs> and let's get into the actual rebuild of this team. And I'm trying to debate if I want to trade the picks now or at the end of the year. Let's wait until the end of the year so we know what our major problems are. For now, I think I'm just going to treat this like a regular realistic-ish rebuild. I'm not going to do any trades here. So let's get to the mid-season point of year one one, and hopefully we don't suck, but we'll see. Ooh, okay, weird division. We are two and four at the midseason point of year number one. The Cardinals are leading the division at four and three. I don't know about that. Um, <laughs> the Cardinals looked a little better than I expected yesterday, but they still lost, and they still didn't look good, but they're leading the division here. Um, we have a really, really bad record. I don't even know if the Seahawks will be this bad in real life, but they might because the Rams game that they got smoked in was like the easiest one coming up in their schedule so it, it's not looking great what else isn't looking great is our re-signings we have six mil to work with and we have Noah Fant Jordan Brooks Devin Bush Damian Lewis Colby Parkinson who I like in real life but he's a backup here like this is bad Evan Brown too he's a starter Phil Haynes is a starter oh god Bobby Wagner back here too what are we gonna do Mario Edwards is a starter <laughs> that 
that is literally one, two, three, four, five, six, seven starters, and not even seven mil to work with. We could bring somebody here back. Who do we want to bring back? Maybe Jordan Brooks, but he's not interested. We can't afford Wagner. We can't afford Lewis. We can't afford Fant. I mean, Brooks is the best player that we can actually afford. We will offer him five years, 31 mil, and he doesn't even re-sign. I'm unsure if this team gets me the future I'm looking for. I can tell you it does not, but you should re-sign anyways. <laughs> Smile. Okay, well, tough, tough first season. I'll say that. I forgot this team was as broke as it is, so we'll have to really work out the restructuring at the end of the year. But speaking of that, let's get to the end of the year, and hopefully everyone on the team doesn't suck, but we will see. Okay, well, <laughs> Madden does not have very much faith in this team, and I am losing it too, but I don't think they're gonna go 3-14. and 14. Maybe they will, and maybe I shouldn't have said that, but my prediction before the year was they'll go 10 and 7. Now I'm starting to lean towards like 8 and 9, 9 and 8, but we'll see. But let's see, uh, let's see what went wrong with this team. By the way, the Cardinals made the playoffs at only 8 and 9. Interesting. Oh, Geno Smith with 3,100 yards, 19 touchdowns, 7 picks. I feel like they lowered passing. No, they didn't. I was gonna say, I feel like they lowered passing touchdown numbers again, but guess not. But yeah, Geno wasn't very good. Why is he not in here? I thought it doesn't do this for like QBs. I thought it only did that for defensive players where it doesn't show everybody. Am I crazy? Oh, that was AFC. I thought I was on NFL. I'm stupid. So yeah, the fourth lowest amount in the NFL for starters. At least he didn't throw many picks though. The sixth lowest for starters. So I guess we'll take that, but like still gross. Kenneth Walker was, uh, he was okay. A thousand yards is cool, but only four yards per carry. That's not bad. I was hoping for more like 4.5 from him. Six touchdowns. Zach Charbonnet with 10 touchdowns, though. That's decent. DK was our leading receiver with only 900 yards. Tyler Lockett with only 700. JSN with only 500. I don't want to use this offensive playbook. I'm going to switch it immediately to something more pass heavy because that's, that's not fun. I mean, that's like the one part of this team that's really good. The receiving core. <laughs> oh, Charles Cross was horrific. 17 sacks allowed. Evan Brown with five. That's not great. Phil Haynes was good, but we probably probably won't be able to re-sign him. Bobby Wagner led the team with 114 tackles, 112 for Devin Witherspoon. Tackles for loss, 15 for Mike Morris led the team. I did start him over Mario Edwards, because obviously Mario Edwards isn't part of our future plans, believe it or not. Nuosu and Jones with 14, and then Sacks. Chenna Nuosu with only five and a half led the team. Five for Mike Morris as a rookie. Good rookie year from him overall. Only three from Derek Hall as a starter, and two and a half from Draymond Jones. I would say that's unrealistically low, but to be fair, they had zero in week one against a probably the worst offensive line in the NFL on paper in the Rams. I mean, I guess they have Rob Havenstein, but like other than him, it's kind of just a bunch of dudes. Dudes with potential, but right now it's just a bunch of dudes. And let me tell you, I love a bunch of dudes. I regret saying that. <laughs> Bobby Wagner and Tariq Woolen led the, led the team with three interceptions and then one each from quite a few players. So what is that total? 11? That's pretty good. We'll take that. Better than the three that I've gotten before, or zero. I've gotten zero before. Not with a zero overall team either, like an actual good roster. MVP goes to Patrick Mahomes, though. Offensive player of the year goes to Jalen Hurts. No Seahawks. Defensive player of the year goes to Aaron Donald. Aziz Ajulari up there. That's different. I've never seen that. Dante Fowler up there on the Panthers. Pete Werner. TJ Edwards up there is weird because the Bears think playing him in cover coverage is a good idea. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Bijan. That makes sense. He's probably my pick to win it in real life. Zach Charbonnet at number six, JSN at number seven. Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Jack Campbell. Mike Morris at two, Witherspoon at three, so we can't win Defensive Rookie of the Year, but we were close at least. Derek Hall at number six. He sucked. I'm surprised he was up here at all. So disappointing first year, but it's only year one of this chaotic rebuild. It's gonna be a lot different in the future, at least I hope.
hope, but there are definitely a lot of questions for our team. And there isn't really one group of players on this team that I could say did super well. I would say maybe our off-ball linebackers, and our offensive line was solid outside of Charles Cross, but everything else was kind of not great. So let's get into the offseason, and let's hopefully improve this team a good amount now that we know what to look for. But in the Super Bowl, the Cowboys lose to the Bills 35-14. to For some reason, okay, I'm working on my custom rosters, and my custom rosters ratings are usually lower than the actual Madden overall teams, and for some reason, the Cowboys seem to do better in terms of, like, being in the Super Bowl now. Dak isn't up there for MVP as much. I have him at, like, an 82 or an 83 in my custom rosters, but now that I lowered them, they seem to do better in terms of, like, making the Super Bowl. They don't win this one. The Bills do, but still, it's weird. <laughs> oh, I just simmed past the re-signing period, but that's fine. We don't have any money to work with anyways. We only have four mil, and I don't know how much I'm gonna be able to free up. We will see, though. But it might be looking rough already. Let's see what we can do. Okay, just through restructuring and cutting a couple players, we freed up a good amount of money, almost 50 mil to work with now. And there are some solid players to think about in free agency. We definitely don't need Mike Williams. Bobby Wagner, I might bring back. He was good, but we also might want to get younger there. We could go for Patrick Queen, maybe. We'll think about it. I probably want to go for Josh Allen. Maybe like Milton Williams or something, just as like a Band-Aid option. We'll see. But I'll look through here real quick, and we'll see if we can make any good moves here. Okay, well, these are the players we're gonna go for in free agency. Noah Fant, I'm even iffy about, because trading, obviously, we could do, but we have enough good receivers already. We don't really need to go for, like, a crazy tight end or anything, but we could eventually if I feel like it, and depending on if, what offensive scheme we run, because if we run, like, the Chiefs offense or something, we obviously want a really good tight end, but it depends, I guess. But we're going for Patrick Queen, Noah Fant, Damian Lewis, and Phil Haynes, just bringing back three players and then bringing in Patrick Queen. So let's see if we can sign any of these guys right off the bat. They all sign except Fant, but if we don't get Fant, I'm fine with that. We get Queen, we get Lewis, and we get Haynes. Let's see if we get Fant. We don't get Fant, but that's, again, that's fine. Because we still have Will Disley anyways, who's older here, but still good enough. And the plan, I think, is to eventually trade for one. Maybe right now, we'll see. So with that, let's work on some trade. We'll see what we can do. Oh, I didn't think this would go through, but we will absolutely take that. We are getting Brian Burns, a two, a three, a four, and a five from the Panthers for our first round pick. It is the third overall pick, so a really high one, and we're getting a decent amount of value, maybe not even as much as we should. Can Well, it's the number three pick, not like it's number one or anything, so that's a pretty good trade for us. I would honestly almost be fine just trading that pick straight up for Brian Burns, and I mean, he's a player that's unhappy in real life. Not that this is a realistic rebuild, but at least it's maybe realistic that he gets traded. Probably not, but you never know. This team is gonna be so weird by the end of this. It's gonna look like a fantasy draft team or something. All right, well, here we are trading two seconds, a third, and a fourth for Kyle Pitts. Someone that just doesn't get used in Atlanta, even though he is a really good player. Arthur Smith just doesn't like him or something. I don't know. So we are getting a pretty good amount of, or we're getting him for a pretty good value considering what the Falcons spent on him. So we'll take it. Ooh, that seems really cheesy. We're trading two thirds for Jordan Davis, who has superstar dev, by the way. We really need defensive line, so that's pretty massive to get. And now we should be pretty good up front, theoretically, but we'll see. Here we're gonna be trading our fifth and sixth round picks, at least I think they're ours. They might be one of them we traded for, I don't know. We're trading them for Cam Taylor Britt from the Bengals to be our third corner. He has star dev, by the way. I'm just checking the trade block now to find some good players there, and I'm definitely pretty happy with that one. And we got Kirby Joseph for just a fourth round pick. I don't know why that was so easy to do, but we're getting good secondary players for really, really cheap. It was that easy to get Kirby Joseph for a fourth round pick, but 
this trade is that far away from going through, not that, you know, the Giants should trade John Michael Schmitz for a fifth and a seventh, but you're telling me that one went through that easy, but this is that far away? That's kind of crazy. <laughs> Apparently centers are hard to trade for. I didn't know that. But here's how the team is looking after all of that trading. I'm surprised we're not even a higher of an overall. But I mean, we're looking nice. We still need a number two middle linebacker and probably another D lineman. But Mike Morris was solid as a rookie. So hopefully we can get more from him. I was hoping he would get a dev trait, but he didn't. So it's kind of tough, but he still hopefully he can play well. We'll see. We might need a new QB. Gino was not good last year, but hopefully. Hopefully we can get everything figured out and play a little better than we did last year, although year two in rebuilds is usually pretty rough, so we'll see what happens. But there might be one more trade for us to make, but as far as I know, I think that's everything we have to do in this offseason. So, okay, we do have two more picks, a fifth and a seventh, so I'll get those traded and then we'll just get into year number two of the rebuild. It's so weird to not do anything for the draft. I've never done this before. Okay, and we are trading a 5, a 7, and a 6 next year for David Long who was currently on the Jets but we're stealing him from them. Where is he even at now? I feel like he's bounced around a lot. Or, er, no, I think he just signed with the Dolphin, but I don't think he's bounced around. I think I think I'm thinking of Jayon Brown, the other former Titans linebacker. But yeah, he was on the Titans and then just signed with the Dolphin. I get those two mixed up because they're similar ish players. Anyways, I'm just rambling. We get David Long for pretty cheap for a good starting linebacker. We'll take it. And now that is all of our draft picks. The team isn't overwhelmingly expensive yet, but it probably will be soon. So we'll try to be good before then. But with that, let's get into year number two of the rebuild. But here's a look at the team heading into year number two of the rebuild. Obviously pretty different. Not so much on offense. I mean, we did add Lloyd Cushenberry through free agency, which I didn't show because it's like not that important. But obviously, Obviously, the Kyle Pitts one was important, and hopefully with the new Chiefs playbook, he can do pretty well here. Trey McBride also got cut, apparently, so I picked him up, but I think the rest of the offense is the same, and then on defense, obviously some big additions here too. Jordan Davis, Brian Burns, Patrick Queen, David Long, Kirby Joseph, big overhaul to our defense. It's still not amazing, but it definitely has the potential to be in the next couple seasons. The problem the problem is this team is already very expensive and it's only year one. We haven't paid most of these players. So that's the only thing I'm a little concerned about. Well, it's actually pretty concerning because look when I go to restructure a contract, like let's say Brian Burns, I haven't restructured him because for 2025, our estimated cap space is negative 36 mil. Well, probably like 34 because that's counting about two mil against it if I restructure. So that's not great, <laughs> but we can also probably restructure to get out of that, but we also have to trade our draft picks for more players that are on contracts, so we'll see what happens when we get there. We might have to trade our picks for all rookies, which might not be like a bad thing necessarily, but we obviously wouldn't be getting already good proven players out of it, so it's like, this is such a fun one, I'm not gonna lie. I love the ones where we have to like strategically do stuff like this and figure out how to do it as we go. I've been loving all the rebuild challenges I've been doing lately. Even though some of them aren't like successful in the teams we build, it's still fun to like figure it out as we go and just see what happens. But anyways, let's get to the midseason point of year two and hopefully we can do better than last year. But year two for rebuilds is kind of rough, so we'll see. Okay, well never mind about what I said about Madden Sim being terrible in year two. We're four and two here. We are better than last year for sure. I guess the opposite of our record last year. Up to an 83 overall now, we're definitely looking pretty good. We have some re-signings to make here though. Oh, oh, that's a problem. I didn't know we would have that much negative cap this year. Oh yeah, I guess that is the 2025 cap that we're working with instead of this year's cap. So that makes sense. So right now we can't afford to bring Kyle Pitts, pa Pitts back or anyone else here. Hmm, <laughs> maybe Kyle Pitts was just a one year rental. Glad we traded a first round pick for him or whatever we traded. Of course, I mean, there's still an opportunity for us to clear up 
cap space at the end of the year, so we shouldn't fully panic yet, but that's not great. So hopefully we can clear up cap at the end of the year because it would suck to lose him, but the rest of these guys are replaceable. By the way, this Tyler Powell, Powell guy, I think the Patriots drafted him. He was on their practice squad, but he had hidden dev. He was a 69 overall defensive end, which nice, and he stayed the same overall once I moved him to outside linebacker. He's already a 71 though. Does he have like superstar or something? I'm gonna cheat. It's not like I'm gonna start him or anything, but does he have superstar? No, he just has star. Okay, that's fine though, but that was a pretty good pickup. Hopefully we can bring him back. Julian Love, we can let go. Milton Williams was just chilling in free agency, so I picked him up, and then the majority of these other guys, that was a rough sentence, the majority of these other guys are just backups, other than Lloyd Cushenberry, so we are fine for the most part, other than Kyle Pitts, and we will pick the fifth year up for probably Davis, but probably not Cross. So we look screwed right now, but there is obviously a chance that we get out of this. But anyways, I'm just rambling. I'm saying the same thing over and over. I do that a lot, I notice, watching these back. I try not to do it so much, but I do it. But anyways, let's get to the end of year number two. Okay, well, unfortunately, at the end of year number two, we finish nine and eight, just missing out on the playoffs. Somehow only good for third in our division. The Cardinals are actually decent here for whatever reason. The 49ers still good, and unfortunately no playoffs for us, but we had a solid offense, 13th in offense, and I switched our defensive playbook to the Buccaneers, and we had the 8th scoring defense, so that's pretty good. Good run D, which is something the Seahawks need in real life, which they did in the first game, but it doesn't really matter if you have a good run D if you have a terrible pass D, which I thought they were gonna have a terrible run D, and I thought their pass D would be okay, but no, other way around. <laughs> but Geno Smith here, 4,300 yards, 32 touchdowns, 12 picks, looking similar to his year last year in real life. These are really similar stats. Didn't he also have like 43-ish hundred yards? Or was it like 41? It was 42, almost 4,300 yards. On 572 attempts, he had 575 here. 30 touchdowns, he had 32 here. 11 picks, he had 12 here. And this doesn't say, but I think he had like a 70 or 71% completion percentage. He had 67 here. So, I mean, that's a realistic stat line compared to last year in real life. Kenneth Walker was kind of cheeks, though, I'm not gonna lie. Almost 1,100 yards, but only 3.8 yards per carry, seven touchdowns. I mean, 1,000 yards is cool, but only 3.8 yards per carry is not very cool. Ugh, the blocking wasn't good again. To be fair, we did pass a lot, but 12 sacks allowed from Cross. Nine for Lucas, he sucked this year. I remember that with Abe Lucas. He'll do really well one year and then really bad the next year. It's so weird. Cushionberry was terrible. Lewis was fine and Haynes was fine. Ooh. Okay, Patrick Queen led the team with 126 tackles, 116 for Long. Tackles for loss, 20 from Burns. That's good. 16 from Nwosu. 13 from Davis, 10 for Long. But sacks, 10 and a half from Nwosu is good. Only five and a half from Burns, though. I thought the addition from Burns is what made us, or the addition of Burns is what made us do better this year, but apparently not. I mean, the tackles for loss are cool, but five and a half sacks? That's not great. And then interceptions, only seven total on the season, two from Queen and Adams, and then one for a few more players. So our defense, even though the scoring was good, I mean, the stats were not as good. Joe Burrow wins MVP here, so thankfully we're seeing different MVPs now. Gino up there at number 10, we'll take that. Offensive player of the year goes to Bijan. Sterling Shepard on the Vikings up there, that's interesting. Kyle Pitts at number 10. Hopefully we can bring him back. Did I just skip over the receiving yards, by the way? I definitely did. I don't know how I did that. I'll check that in a second. But I saw he had 1,200 from the little preview. Micah Parsons wins Defensive Player of the Year. Chenna at number six. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Brandon Wilkins of the Rams, and Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Larry Wilkins on the Buccaneers. I do not see that guy we picked up from the Patriots up there, but oh well. He didn't play anyways. <laughs> but receiving, Kyle Pitts with almost 1,300 yards, 11 touchdowns. Lockett had over 1,000 yards. JSN over 900 yards, eight touchdowns. DK Metcalf almost 800 yards, which is low for him, but there are a lot of weapons in this off. So despite not making the playoffs, this definitely seemed like a very, very solid year. So with that, not much else for us to do, and let's get into the off season. and hopefully, 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 we can bring our players back, but I don't think so. That's not gonna happen, but you never know. We'll see. God, I can't, I hate how you can't see the Super Bowl winner here anymore. It goes to the Bengals this time, beating the Cowboys, who lose the Super Bowl again. They're trying to pull a Buffalo Bills. I referenced the Bills for that a lot. I guess it just happens a weird amount in 
Madden. Like, there will be a team that shows up in a ton of Super Bowls, but they just lose them. For this rebuild, it's the Cowboys. In the past, it's been, like, the Ravens and the Falcons for some reason, I remember. And I think, like, the Eagles did it or something. But I don't know. There are a lot of repeat Super Bowl losers. It's interesting. What else is interesting is not our upgrades. That doesn't matter. Those are all practice squad guys. It is our negative show up, please. 38 mil in cap space. Yikes. <laughs> what are we going to do about this? I mean, I know what we're going to do about this, but is it going to be enough? We'll see. I don't know if I'm weird, but I think the restructuring is like satisfying. I don't know why. It just kind of is. You know what I mean? <laughs> but let's see what we can get worked out. Hopefully we can restructure anyone. Uh, Maybe we can't restructure anyone. Let me see. Okay, we can do that. We're set to have a lot of money next year. So I'll go through some of these and we'll see what we can do. Okay, so we could not, unfortunately, clear up enough, enough cap space. Not yet, at least, but I want to show what I'm going to do here. So we are going to release Draymond Jones, a signing that I hated in real life, to be honest, but it might work out because the Seahawks run D looked better yesterday. But we are going to release Draymond Jones. We might re-sign him, but it saves us 16 and a half mil to do that. So that's a no-brainer. We might re-sign him. We also might just upgrade there if we can. We m I don't want to risk, like, losing Gino, so we're not going to cut him to re-sign him, but we'll s we'll see. Tyler Lockett is regressing. We're going to cut him here. We'll obviously try to re-sign him. We could also just look to upgrade if there is a better option. We'll see. And we will see about Jamal, too, because that's 17 and a half mil. I doubt it would cost that much to re-sign him, but I don't want to risk it, so we're not going to yet. But we'll see when we get there. And I'm also going to release Julian Love just because, I mean, he's solid. At least he was for the Giants last year, but the Seahawks use him wrong, of course. Who would have guessed? So we're going to release him here, and that saves us 5 mil more. And now we still only have 10 mil to work with. Hmm. Well, let's pick up the fifth year for Jordan Davis, at least. We will decline the one for... Oh, can you not decline it? You just don't? Okay, that's fine. We won't pick up Charles Cross's fifth year. And let's see, can we clear up any more cap space? Just scrap a little bit more. God, I don't know if we can, but this that was the whole point of clearing up cap space. We might have to just tag him. I don't know if the tight end tag would be too much money, though. It might be right around, like, 15 mil? Because obviously we can't afford him. I mean, either way, we'll tag him. I don't have the salary cap. It says I do, but okay. It still says I have the cap, but okay. And he doesn't take it. The tag is 18. Ooh. Really? What are the top tight end contracts? There must be some new ones, because... The most right now is Darren Waller with 17 per year, which is kind of crazy. That's a lot of money for Darren Waller, and I'm a Darren Waller fan, but still. But there must be some new ones, but we'll pick it up anyways. So now we are at negative 7 mil in cap once again. But at least we got a good player back. Now, let's get into free agency. And we're going to have to figure out another way to clear up cap, because we're not going to be able to trade our picks away. I think right now is like the worst time for all of our players' contracts, though. Because next year it said we're going to have like 200 mil or something. You know, I think we might be in the last year for almost every single contract we have. Wait. Oh my god, that's going to be terrible. Hold on. <laughs> Let me check that. Okay, no, we still have some, but which ones are expiring? Boye Mafe, meh. Cam Taylor Britt, kind of sucks. Charles Cross, Abe Lucas, Geno Smith, Kirby Joseph, Quandre Diggs, Damian Lewis, Tariq Woolen, Kenneth Walker, Jamal Adams, DK Metcalf, Kyle Pitts. Okay, that's rough. That's really rough. <laughs> the only ones not expiring, for starters at least, is JSN, Devin Witherspoon, Patrick Queen, Brian Burns, Jordan Davis, and Chen Nwosu. Okay, that's very rough. Hmm. <laughs> so I think we're going to have to trade one of our bigger players away, and I know who that's going to be. Okay, actually checking free agency, Jabril Peppers at an 85 is only apparently worth 9.3 mil per year, but I think it would be a big jump up to the next player, so... God, I don't know. I feel like this game's safety value is really off, though. So I feel like Jamal would be really expensive for no reason. I don't know, though. Okay, well, this wasn't as good of a trade as I thought we would get for Jamal Adams. I mean, he is still a 70 or an 89 overall here. I thought we could get, like, a haul similar to what the Seahawks gave up to get Jamal, but it is nowhere close. Not that I'm saying he's worth that. I Obviously, I just know that Madden... You can get a lot for players in Madden, but we have to give up 
Jamal and a third round pick just to get one first, which that might be almost realistic in real life, because, well, maybe not because of Jamal Adams' injury history too. But I was gonna say, like, maybe teams think they could get, like, Jets Jamal Adams back, which is very possible, actually using him how the Jets use him instead of how the Seahawks use him as a pure blitzer, which gets him hurt, which is super smart. Love that idea from good old PD Carroll. He makes me want to die a little bit. But we get a first round pick, so that's cool. Don't know what we're gonna do with that pick, but we have it. All right, and we get a third round pick from the Colts for Quandre Diggs. Just shipping off both real life Seahawks starting safeties. You know, we needed to clear some cap and that's what both of those moves do. Unfortunately, having to get rid of both safeties, but I think it's worth it. Okay, we're just absolutely stealing the entire Panthers defense. We're trading a first round pick for Derek Brown. We're gonna be really low on money. That's a problem, but we're getting good value from that trade at least, so I'm happy about it. And that's our Draymond Jones replacement, pretty much just a much better player, in my opinion, and probably to everybody else. Maybe not much better to everybody else, but at least to me. I don't know why I'm such a Draymond Jones hater. I used to love him, but not for the money the Seahawks gave him. <laughs> Ooh, Chenna got superstar dev and Cam Taylor Britt, which I did see earlier, but I didn't see the Chenna one. That's pretty nice. Gino got star, which that makes sense. Oh God, we still need a receiver and a guard and a middle linebacker and a safety and a D lineman maybe. This team's expensive, good lord. Think we would really benefit from having a rookie QB or like at least a younger QB, but I don't know. Lynn Walker, that's kind of a cool name. Oh, shit. Okay, I was like, why did the Giants draft a QB top three? I mean, they're not playing, or not top three. I think he was like the fourth pick after paying Daniel Jones, but I guess it wasn't a terrible pick because Bobby Lincoln has X Factor. I wonder if we could trade for him or if it would just be too far out of our reach. Probably because he has X Factor. Oh yeah, that's not gonna happen. <laughs> well, it might. Let me see. This is a lot to give up for a player that might not even be good, but I think it's worth a try. What we're doing to this team is absolutely absolutely insane. Every rebuild I do gets more chaotic, but we are trading Boye Mafe, Zach Charbonnet, a one, a two, and a three. I wanted to make that rhyme, but I didn't want to say like three A, three, I don't know. But we're trading all of that for a completely unproven QB, but a QB with superstar X factor, which is a half predicting him to be good move and a half clearing up cap space move because unfortunately we're going to be trading Mr. Hino Smith because we can simply not afford him. We are are trading Geno Smith to the Bears who have like one quarterback on the roster like a 68 overall for a first round pick. Um Justin Fields looked terrible by the way yesterday which I kind of figured I, I'm not a Fields fan. I even had a bold take that I wouldn't hate it if the Bears like traded Justin Fields and took Bryce Young but I guess Bryce Young didn't look good yesterday but to be fair he's a rookie. It was his literal first game so I don't know. I'm not necessarily necessarily saying that they should have done that but I I wouldn't have hated it, hated it. But anyways, Geno Smith to the Bears here for a first round pick. You hate to see it. I'm like the biggest Geno truther of all time, maybe, but he just doesn't make to make sense to keep for this rebuild, unfortunately. And now we have almost 40 mil in cap to work with. So that pretty much solved all of our problems. What would create a new problem is if this quarterback sucks, but let's not even think about that, okay? <laughs> let's just pretend that he's gonna be amazing. And now we have even more trades to work out. So let's see what we we can do. The Bill or the Buccaneers have 9.11 mil and I'm recording this on 9.11. That's scary. Oh, that is not close. Okay. Bro, there are so many people time stamping like 438 in my last video. Did I accidentally like say a slur? I probably did. Oh, I think I, mm, I can't remember what I did, but I remember like kind of slipping up what I was saying. Hmm. I'll check that later. I'll probably have to cut it out of the video. <laughs> okay. That's a lot of value to give up. This Wilkins guy is more expensive to trade for than Jamal Adams was. But we are getting Larry Wilkins, I think his name was, from the Buccaneers for a first round pick. So we will take it. Unfortunately, not a scheme fit, but obviously the superstar dev should be pretty nice. I mean, he's kind of built like a box safety. I mean, not the 5'9", but he's 206, so he's short and stocky-ish. Not that he's necessarily going to be a box safety, but we'll see. I'm rambling so much in this rebuild. Good lord, I'm sorry. But we still have a lot more picks to trade, so let's see what we can do. All right, we're trading a 4 a five, a seven, and a three next year for Kevin James, great name, from the Patriots. He's only 23 with the star dev at right guard, so that should be pretty nice. I also might make another trade. We'll, uh, we'll see. Nah, I don't think I'm gonna. I was gonna trade Damian Lewis, but
but he's been solid, and I know left guard can be a problem in rebuilds sometimes. A lot of the time, I can never find a good one, and Lewis is at least all right here, even though he is expensive, so we'll rock with him, but obviously a massive amount of roster turnover here, and we're not even done yet because we still can check out free agency, and we still have, what did that say, 43 mil to work with? Oh, we can go for Jamar Chase. <laughs> is that a good idea? This might put us right back in cap hell, but oh, we can get him. We have the lead. Oh, no. That's so unnecessary, but like, I have to. I'm obligated to. I just hit the hell out of my mic with my chin. That was awesome. Um, <laughs> oh, yes, the elite linebacker, Robert Spillane, 76 overall with a superstar dev. All right. Do I want to commit to paying David Long long term? Long term. Haha, <laughs> I'm hilarious. Subscribe right now if you haven't already. I guess I will, though. All right, we're going to try as hard as we can to put ourselves right back in cap hell. We're going to go for Jamar Chase, David Long, and Drew Dahlman in free agency to have less than two mil to work with left. Is this a good idea? Probably not. I mean, let me think about this rationally for a second. We do have a really good receiver in DK and then a good receiver in JSN, but we don't have a dominant top two anymore between Lockett and DK, so let's make that even better with Jamar Chase in DK. Oh, this is such a mistake. This is going to ruin the rebuild, but at least we'll have a good player, so let's go for these three. They all sign and we get all three of them. All right. Well, that was a move. Was it a good move? To be determined, but it was a move. So with that, I think we're done here in free agency in the off season in general. And let's get into year number three of this chaotic rebuild. All right. Well, here is a look at the team heading into year number three of the rebuild. Up to an 85 overall. Now we're looking pretty good. Obviously a lot of change in this off season. And hopefully Bobby Lincoln can do well at QB with his X Factor dev trait wearing number three three. That's interesting. He also looks really fat. I don't know why some QBs look like that, but fair enough. Or some players in general just look like that. But our receiving core is absolutely insane, especially if you count Kyle Pitts, because he plays some receiver in real life, obviously. The O-line I'm worried about, but we'll see what happens. Hopefully Kenneth Walker can do well. And then the defense, just hopefully it can be good in general. Hopefully the pass rush can be better, even though Cheno was good last year, but hopefully everyone else can do well. But even even though we had to get rid of some players due to cap reasons, we still have a very good roster. And it only made us younger with more potential. Like Lincoln will probably pass Geno up in overall this year. But anyways, let's get into year number three of this rebuild. We are still very broke. We are like right on the edge of the cap. It was hard for me to sign depth for this team. But anyways, let's get to the midseason point of year number three and hopefully we can do pretty well, but we'll see. Okay, well, with an 86 overall team, we are two and five. Yay. Where does that rank us in the NFL? An 86 overall, we are tied with the Ravens for the best team as far as I can see. The 49ers have an 87. The Eagles also have an 86. The Cowboys have an 87. So it looks like we are tied for the third best roster in the NFL, yet we are two and five. Makes sense. Thank you, EA. Very cool. It looks like both our offense and defense suck. We have a good pass game, but it's not good enough, apparently, and... Our defense just sucks overall. Fun. <laughs> and in terms of re-signings, we have a lot of players, but we have a lot of money to work with at the very least, so it's not too bad, I guess. <laughs> Kyle Pitts, we definitely want back. We will offer him four years, 52 mil. He might not take this because we suck right now, but no, he does. Okay, cool. DK, we will offer him four years, 70.8 mil. He re-signs too. You love to see it. Kenneth Walker, he has just been okay. He hasn't been super great. I mean, he's got in thousand yard seasons, but oh, I almost said something that would piss a lot of people off. Um, he hasn't gotten that good of a yard per carry average. So, I mean, this year he has a good yard per carry average, but he's in a contract year. So I don't really trust that. We'll, we'll think about him at the end of the year. Cam Taylor Britt. I mean, he's not expensive at all and he has superstars. So like, why not? Even though I wasn't looking to return this offer, this offer is getting real tempting. I don't know why that was so hard for me to read. Probably because I'm blind and I can barely see it. Tariq Woolen has hasn't really developed that much. He's only up to an 82. We'll offer him three years, 20 mil though, and he resigns. Lots of resignings here. Kirby Joseph will offer three years, 18.6 mil. He resigns. Charles Cross, even if he's doing well this year, I probably won't bring him back again because I don't trust it. He's not doing that well either, so we'll let him go. Abe Lucas, how's he doing this year? He's doing good, but once we resign him, I know.
know it's not going to be great, but he's doing well now, so it would be kind of dumb to not re-sign him. He does re-sign. He's not very expensive anyways. Damian Lewis. It's funny how all these ended up in the same year. He already has four sacks allowed. I'm good. He can walk. And then I think everybody else here is just a bunch of backups. There's Michael Dixon and Kaimi Fairbairn. We'll re-sign them, and then we have fifth-year options back there. Michael Dixon re-signs, and Fairbairn re-signs. Okay, so still a few players to re-sign. Well, really, the only one I want to re-sign right now is Cam Taylor Britt, but even if we don't get him back, he's already going to be 26. He'll probably be like an 80-ish overall by the end of the year, so that's replaceable. Like, I would be fine losing him. I would be fine losing all the players that we have left there. So we made out of that actually pretty well, all things considered. And you know what? We might work on a couple trades right here, just because our season is already kind of cooked. I have several questions for the Steelers. Why is James Daniels a 20 mil cap hit as a backup? Well, I guess he's not a backup. He would be starting over Isaac Sayomalo, but still, why are you paying guards a combined 43.8 mil this year? I mean, maybe if you're like the Browns with Joel Batonio and Wyatt Teller, that might be valid still. Ooh. Okay, we're gonna be trading our first round pick away here, along with Damian Lewis for a 79 overall guard, which might be a little weird. And now that I think about it, it kinda is. But he has superstar dev at only 21 years old, and we're gonna be losing Damian Lewis anyways, so we're just getting a lot younger here and upgrading. It's kind of a little expensive to give up a first round pick for a guard, but also he's pretty good. Also, he got hidden dev again. Why? I've never seen it do that, but he has superstar. It showed it when he was on the Titans, so we'll take it. Okay, this is an insane trade. We are gonna be trading Kenneth Walker, Cam Taylor Britt, a second round pick this year, and a first and a third next year. All for B. John Robinson. That is an insane amount to give up for a running back, but he's been like the offensive player of the year here every year, and I'm probably gonna jinx him because I like him so much, but I think he has potential to be the best running back in the NFL. I think he will be. Now that I say that, he's gonna get several season-ending injuries, so I'm sorry, Falcons fans, but yeah, I think he's crazy, and we are trading up a lot to get him, so welcome to the Seahawks, Bijan, and we might not even be done trading. We'll see. We might be, but we'll see. <laughs> okay, we are trading a second round pick next year for Cam Smith, who has star dev from the Dolphins, and a fourth round pick this year to be, I guess, our Cam Taylor Britt replacement for at least a year, unless we sign someone in free agency, so I think that's all we're doing here. Our defense didn't really get much better, but hopefully our offense did, but I'll re rearrange the depth chart, and we will get to the end of year number three, and hopefully we can bounce back a little bit, although I think this season's a little doomed anyways. Okay, well, here we are at the end of year number three, and before I reveal how we did in year number three, if you haven't already, be sure to like, be sure to subscribe. It really does help out the channel. Again, 1,500 likes. Be sure to take like two seconds to drop a like and be sure to subscribe for more rebuilds if you're into that kind of thing because I know I definitely am considering that's literally all I do. But we are up to an 87 overall. We have an, a 91 overall offense, only an 84 defense. I guess maybe the D-line hurts that a little bit and maybe the safeties, but it does look like a pretty good defense. And honestly, I'm surprised our offense is as high as it is because I mean, we I know we have a few really high rated players, but we also only have an 80 overall QB. None of our offensive linemen are over an 83 right now, but I mean, I won't complain. We have an upgrade for Bobby Lincoln too. We will obviously go strong arm now up to an 81 overall. So we love to see that. But in year number three, if you can already tell, we did end up making the playoffs going 10 and seven. Let's see how the team did this year. Bobby Lincoln wasn't great. Oh, he was pretty awful. 4,100 yards, 25 touchdowns, 23 interceptions though. Yikes. That was probably the most in the NFL, right? At least I would assume. Yeah, the most by four. The next closest was Eric Gleason. What a goofy ass name for the Saints. I was looking at him. He was like a 76 overall when the Saints drafted him, now up to an 80. I wanna see how, wow, Baker Mayfield did pretty well. I wanna see how Geno did though. Only 2,900 yards, but 23 touchdowns, eight picks. I guess he's on the Bears, but did they just scramble with him a lot? That's not really, a, that's not a great strategy. I wouldn't really describe him as a scrambler, but uh, pop off, I guess. But anyways, in terms of rushing, Bijan with almost 1,500 yards, 5.2 per carry, 15 touchdowns. Kenny Mack 
McIntosh with 10 touchdowns too. And somehow in the Kansas City Chiefs offense with DK Metcalf, Kyle Pitts, JSN, and Jamar Chase, we didn't have one 1,000 yard receiver. DK Metcalf was the closest with 977 yards, but still did not hit it. Kyle Pitts with over 950, Jackson Smith and Jigbo with over 900, barely. And Jamar Chase with only 700. Yikes. Blocking, Charles Cross sucked once again. Drew Dahlman sucked. Abe Lucas was solid. Kevin James was fine. And Josh Daniels was actually pretty good. We'll take that. That's a good trade, at least year one so far. Patrick Queen led the team with 108 tackles, 103 for David Long. Tackles for loss, we had a lot, as per usual, led by Brian Burns with 18. In sacks from the top three, at least, we had a good amount. 11 for Burns, 10 for Nuosu, and 9.5 and from Derek Brown. But outside of that, literally nothing. Only 1.5 from Jordan Davis. He's been really disappointing, low-key. Three sacks last year, only 1.5 this year. Not great. But interceptions, 4 for David Long, 3 for Patrick Queen, and then 1 for a few players. So thank God for our middle linebackers, because nobody else got picks on our team. I love Tariq Woolen with zero. That's realistic. Oh my god, dude. This game is gonna make me kill myself. <laughs> the top two is Patrick Mahomes and Dak Prescott. Who would have guessed? I thought we were over that. I mean, we haven't had those as the top two for any of them in this rebuild, but guess what? They're back and better than ever as the top two. I mean, Mahomes is realistic, but not Dak. Offensive player of the year goes to Bijan Robinson. We'll take that. Defensive player of the year goes to Aaron Donald. Brian Burns at number six. Nuosu at number nine and David Long at number 10. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Terrell Ankrum for the Buccaneers, and Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Tevin Milstead for the Packers. Even though we did make the playoffs and we did make a big rebound, I'm still disappointed by how the team did overall, considering, I mean, now we're in 87, the best teams in the NFL were in 87 when I last checked. I mean, there are probably 88s now, but we're probably at least tied for the second or third best roster in the NFL, but at least we made the playoffs. It could be worse. We had to do some shit to get here, but we made them. But we're going to be taking on, taking, taking on the Falcons in the wild card. We have a first of many scenario and we will go play it cool. Y'all know me. God, I'm like morbidly curious about <laughs> what those songs created by NFL players sound like. I've never heard them, but I see them pop up on the bottom. I don't know how to turn them off, but I see them popping up down there a lot and I don't want to hear them, but I'm also curious. I see Teron Armstead in like every single one. Why? I don't know. Either way, we're going to be taking on the Falcons in the wild card, like I said. Do they still have Desmond Ritter? I want to check. I mean, obviously, we took Bijan from them, but they should still have Tyler Algier. Maybe? Oh, no, they have Kenneth Walker. Never mind. Oh, they have Jared Goff at QB. I saw him up there for MVP. Okay. And yeah, they do still have Tyler Algier, but obviously, we traded them Kenneth Walker. Drake London's kind of developing here. This team doesn't look that crazy. I say that, and I know we're going to lose to them, but they do still have AJ Terrell, Jesse Bates, Chris Lindstrom, so they're looking pretty good. We should definitely win this. I mean, we have four overall on them, but let's simulate the week and let's see what happens. Okay, we do actually get the win. I love how it doesn't say the score anymore. That's super fun. What did we win by? What was the score? We won... 35 to 7. Okay, I don't know if we should have destroyed them that bad, but we did have a better roster, so I definitely won't complain. And we're going to be taking on the Eagles this week, who do have the same exact overall team as us. 91 offense, 84 defense, 87 overall team. That's what we have. But we have a recap for the first of many before we probably lose this game. Give us those sweet, juicy staff points, please and thank you. Does defense just determine how good your team is? because we both have an 84 overall defense and we both went 10 and 7. We both had good not great defenses and both had good not great records. It's weird that we have the exact same overall and had the exact same record. It makes me think that it has something to do with simulation. I don't know. I try so hard to figure out how simulation works and what makes teams good and bad, but I just can't figure it out, <laughs> genuinely. But anyways, let's simulate this game out against the Eagles and and let's see if we can get a win. And we unfortunately do not get a win. I mean, hopefully we didn't get smoked, but we probably did. Oh no, we didn't. It was literally a one point game. Okay, that's valid. 15 to 14. That's a weird score. I guess it's probably happened before. It's probably not score Agami or whatever, but still a weird score. Do I have time for one more year? You know what? We'll give it one more year. Let's get into the off season and let's get into a super quick year number four. And 
unless the team looks like it's going to fall apart, then we will wrap it up. <laughs> I guess it just depends on our cap situation. We'll see. Okay, well, in the Super Bowl, the Ravens take down the Eagles in a bird Super Bowl, 28-24. to The Ravens were 15-2. and Good Lord. We have a good amount of upgrades here, too. Two for B. John Robinson. One for Brian Burns. I don't know why he got that, but he has X Factor now. Love to see that. Maybe he had, like, the most tackles for loss in the NFL? I, I don't know. He must have won something. But in terms of re-signings here, we have the fifth year for Bijan, but that's not really gonna matter. Fifth year for JSN. Again, not gonna matter. Fifth year for Devin Witherspoon. We'll pick it up, but this is the last year anyways, so none of those are gonna matter. Charles Cross has not been good throughout the rebuild, so we're not gonna bring him back. And then everyone else here is just depth. So we're gonna go into free agency with 66 mil to work with, and hopefully we can make this team actually good. I mean, it's already good, but hopefully we can make it play super well. Ooh, that's kind of what I wanted to see. The question is, is Ronnie Stanley actually good in this game? Yes. Okay, he is. Well, it's hard to say because that's a very run-heavy offense he's been in, but uh, hopefully he can do well here, assuming we get him. We do have the lead for him, so that would be a pretty massive addition, but we'll go for him, obviously, and we still have to trade the rest of our picks for this year, so let's see what we want to upgrade on this team. Okay, here we're going to be trading two fourth-round picks picks, a fifth round pick, and a second round pick, I guess in two years, I meant to trade that next year, and Derek Hall to the Broncos for Kenny Clark. Really, our defensive line was like our last need, but I don't think Mike Morris played anyways, but this just makes the roster look better, so we'll take it. Definitely won't complain about that. And let's see if we can trade for like a really old corner, but still a good one. Hmm, I don't know if that's gonna happen, to be honest. Even the super old corners, like 33 years old, are like like not even close to going through, which isn't realistic. I mean, hell, the, the Dolphins only had to trade like a third round pick for goddamn Jalen Ramsey. Still probably the best corner in the NFL, at least I think. So yeah, unfortunately, I don't think we're gonna be able to trade for a corner. They're just too expensive. But we need to get rid of these two picks, so we'll find something. Oh, I didn't think that would go through, but we trade Kenny McIntosh for a star dev defensive tackle from the Broncos. We're just stealing the Broncos defensive line. We still didn't get rid of our picks, but I guess that's an upgrade. We'll take it. Okay, we're trading our sixth and seventh round picks, Tyreek Smith, and a fifth next year for Brian Branch from the Lions. We're stealing a lot of, like, position groups from the same teams. I mean, we already took Kirby Joseph from the Lions. Now we took Brian Branch. We took 2D linemen from the Broncos. Like, I don't know why that's working out like that, but they're just putting all those players up on the trade block, so we'll take it. Oh, Chen and Owosu got x Factor. I knew Burns got it, but I didn't know Nuosu got it, so we'll take that. Any other dev ups? I don't think so, but to be fair, we already have a lot of X factors, so that's fine. And in free agency, of course, we're still going for Ronnie Stanley. We'll see if he accepts in a second. I kind of want a new center, but there isn't really one here, and we've already traded all of our picks away. I kind of wish I looked more at center, but it is what it is. But this is who we're going to go after in free agency. We might as well spend all of our money. We're going for for Ronnie Stanley, Jalen Phillips, Damian Harris, Martin Emerson, and Lewis Seen. Not all of these players are necessary. Most of them are going to be backups like Phillips, Harris, and Seen, but some of them will be starters and they will be good starters. At least hopefully they play well, but they'll be good in terms of overall. So let's see if we can get any of these guys right off the bat. We do have the lead for all of them. All of them sign except for Lewis Seen. We get Ronnie Stanley, Jalen Phillips, Damian Harris, and Martin Emerson. That is pretty huge. And Lewis Seen, do you want to sign? Do you want to see Ayn? I'm hilarious. Okay, he does sign. You love to see it. So, what's our team looking like? Oh, a 90 overall? Okay, we'll we'll take that. God damn. You know what? This is a legit strat to build a good team. We still don't have like an insane corner, but everything else on this team is pretty good. So that's all we're going to do in the offseason, I think. And let's get into the fourth and final year of this rebuild. Okay, well, here we're going to trade Jalen Phillips away way to the Browns for Greg Newsom and a fourth round pick and a seventh round pick. And obviously we can't use those picks because this is the last year. So I'm going to trade both of those away. Jalen Phillips is cool, but he's going to be our third guy. I'd rather get a number one corner.
corner than a third pass rusher. I don't really think I have to explain myself much there. That's kind of a no-brainer. Which, speaking of people questioning me and stuff, I got like a million comments in the all undrafted players rebuild I did asking, why the fuck didn't you trade your early picks down? Which I guess is a valid, a valid question, but in Madden draft classes, undrafted players can get drafted decently early in the draft if they're like a really good overall because teams, the CPU kind of has like a little bit of knowledge of like what players are actually really good. So players that are projected to go undrafted can go high. So I don't want to trade those picks down and miss out on maybe some really good players if I think any are good enough. And it would have been cool to have like, you know, a million undrafted projected players with our later round picks, but I can, I was getting like better players that actually went undrafted than the players I was drafting. It's just like, I'm sick of having to reply to that comment because I have my reasons for what I do in rebuilds, despite what some people think. I Trust me, I thought about trading those early picks down, but I didn't for a reason. But anyways, let's see if we can make a decent trade here. Because even though the roster is really good, we could make it even better right here. Thinks we need left tackle? We have Ronnie Stanley. We're good there. You know, I don't even really know what we need at all. Uh, maybe a center. We still might need a center. That'll be what I look for. Okay. Okay. I have had trades get declined and it be like super close to the point where I can't see it, but I can literally not see that one. Like I do not see even the tiniest gap in that bar, but okay. <laughs> we'll trade a seventh in like three years that we will never even get close to using. We're trading Brian Branch, Matt Corral, and the four and the seven we got from the Browns for Connor Williams from the Titans. I know I just traded for Brian Branch, but we got Lewis seen now like we're good we have too many safeties so we're getting rid of players that we don't need for starters so that's a pretty good process but here's a look at the team heading into the fourth and final year of the rebuild down to an 89 overall I guess our morale kind of wore off but I don't really see where it wore off but it is what it is that's fine we should be back up to that by the end of the year unless we have a randomly terrible season which wouldn't surprise me because Madden simulation but we are are hoping for the best. The team is very, very good. And we have a lot of money to work with, actually. We still have like 40 mil from restructuring. In other words, this team is insane. <laughs> and this is a legitimate strategy to build a crazy good roster. Just trade all your draft picks away, and you don't even need to do all of them, but it definitely seems to work as long as you know how to manage the cap. But anyways, y'all have seen the roster. So with that, let's just get straight to the end of your number four, and hopefully we can do pretty well, although it, sometimes it seems like the better team you have, the worse you do in Madden Simulation. <laughs> okay, well, in year number four, we do end up making the playoffs, finishing at 11 and 6, up to a 91 overall. This might be the best team we've ever built, at least definitely for this year's game. Bobby Lincoln up to an 88 with morale just from one year, but this team in general is very, very good. But let's Let's check out some of the season stats. Bobby Lincoln was definitely good. A lot of interceptions, but 4,300 yards, 36 touchdowns, 70% completion percentage. I wish that was more like 10 interceptions, but he was good overall for sure. If the team wasn't this good though, he might not be. <laughs> Bijan Robinson with 1,600 yards, 6.3 yards per carry. That's insane. In 21 touchdowns, that might be the most yards per carry I've ever seen. It was, well, let me see. Yeah, it was the the most in the NFL for starting running backs. The next closest was Josh Jacobs. Josh Allen also had the same amount. So we will definitely take that. He was insane. Jamar Chase led the team with 1,200 yards, 13 touchdowns. Kyle Pitts with only five, yes, five less yards than Jamar Chase, nine touchdowns for him. And then not much outside of that in receiving. DK with only 564 yards and two touchdowns. Not great there. This isn't a very pass. I mean, it was not a not pass pass heavy offense, but it wasn't as pass heavy as the Chiefs normally are. It was about top 10 for most passing. Is that English? I don't know. It's close enough. But in terms of blocking, Ronnie Stanley was okay. That would be a bad year for him in real life, but for Madden, that's not the worst. Connor Williams is always terrible in this game. I don't know why. I knew that when I traded for him, but I was just hoping that the rest of the line would be so good that it would make him play well, but no, he sucked. He was bad. Josh Daniels wasn't great, but a Luke 
was amazing, and Kevin James was good. Patrick Queen led the team with 132 tackles, tackles for loss, 15 for Derek Brown led the team. In sacks, Derek Brown was definitely a big addition, getting 15 and a half sacks here, 10 for Brian Burns, 9 for Kenny Clark, and 7 and a half for Chen and Wosu. So, uh, I'd highly recommend getting Derek Brown in your franchises. I don't know if he always plays like this, but he's been good here for the two seasons he's been here, or however long he's been here. I can't remember anymore. <laughs> Greg Newsom led the team in interceptions with three, two for David Long and Devin Witherspoon, and then one for Patrick Queen and Lewis Seen. That's not many in total, though. Only nine total. That's not great when our quarterback is throwing double that, but it is what it is. <laughs> MVP goes to Josh Allen, Bijan at number seven. That's rare to see a running back up here. One below him, too. I'm sorry, that's fucked up. I'm not some Justin Fields hater, but I've, I'm have i sick of seeing the hype around him. He isn't a great passer yet. He definitely could be someday, but today is not the day. Bijan Robinson wins Offensive Player of the Year. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Chase Young. Derek Brown at number nine. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Javante Dickerson for the Packers. And Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Daniel Beck. That is the whitest name I've ever heard. That sounds like an actor name. I don't know why. But I'm sure our season is going to come to an end right here because we are taking on the Green Bay Packers in the playoffs. Not that they're necessarily great in this game, but I don't have much faith that we're going to go far. I mean, with a 91 overall team, we somehow lost six games. Let me see where we rank in the NFL in terms of overall. I mean, we are 10 overall higher than the Saints. I want to see what their record is. It probably isn't good, but I want to see it. Same with the Patriots, same with the Panthers. Like, bruh. <laughs> okay, yeah, there isn't even a team close to us. Same with the Browns. They're only an 81. What is the next highest team? The Ravens are an 87, and I think I saw one other 87. The Chiefs are an 87. We are the highest in the NFL by four hole overall. We should be destroying teams out here, like every single team. The Patriots went 10 and 7. I think they were one of those 81 overall teams. We only won one more game than them while we are 10 overall higher. <laughs> That's insane. But anyways, I'll stop complaining. I almost want to force win this game just because I don't want it to end here with how good of a team we've built. But force winning is lame. But Madden simulation is also lame. So I don't know what to do here. We'll we'll just take it. We'll simulate the game and let's see if we can take down the Packers. Okay, we thankfully do. We are going to be taking on the Commanders in the divisional they're an 85 overall, again, the same record as us, even though we are six overall better, which that's a little closer, I guess, but still. What did we beat the Packers by? I hate how you can't see it anymore. Why is that a thing? I don't think it's intentional either, because look, the NFL draft logo is stuck right there, and 2026 is stuck hovering on top of it, so they changed something right there, apparently, but didn't do it right. Shocking, I know. When would EA ever mess anything up? Ooh, we barely won 30 to 24. Yikes. <laughs> but there's literally nothing else for us to do here. I guess we can check weekly awards. Did we get one of those? Devin Witherspoon with 15 tackles. That's probably not great if your corner is getting that many tackles. They're probably getting beat in coverage, but it is what it is. David Long got one in week 16. Bijan in week 12 got one. David Long again in week 8. Patrick Queen in week 7. We were dominating these. We swept them in week 3 with Bobby Lincoln and Patrick Queen. Bobby Lincoln got one in week 2. And Greg Newsom got one in week one. How were we a bad team? We dominated all those weekly awards and everything. How did we go 11 and 6? But I don't know. Either way, let's simulate this game against the Commanders, and let's see if we can get a commanding win. We will probably lose. And we do. Who would have guessed? Um, our defense actually wasn't very good, which is stupid. But we lose to a team that is six overall worse than, the, than us while we are at home. That's fun. What am I trying to do? Where am I going? <laughs> I'm trying to go to the schedule, but I keep forgetting where it's at. We lost by one point, 21 to 20. It, at least it was close, but we should have decimated them. Like, it should have been similar to what the Vikings did to the 49ers there. Like, that should have not been, that should not have been a close game. But anyways, we built a monster team, and I hope y'all enjoyed today's video. Again, if y'all did, be sure to like, be sure to subscribe. It really helps out the channel, and it'll help you see more of my banger rebuilds, because again, rebuilds are literally all I do. But you're definitely a real one if you've made it all the way here. So thank you so much for watching. And with that, I will see y'all again in the next video. Goodbye.